moving over to the session on indirect treatment comparison. So looking at the context and impact. Where is that need for indirect treatment comparisons coming from? Well, in most cases, there are no head-to-head -head trials with the relevant comparators. And this is normal because this is the way it is made for the regulatory agencies to give the marketing authorization. So in Canada, this is Health Canada. In the United States, it is the FDA. So in most cases, the pivotal phase three trial compares your new agent to either the placebo or the standard of care, but as an add-on, or it might be compared to an active treatment, but that is an older, less expensive product that may have more liberal reimbursement. So by that, I mean you might be compared against aspirin, which of course is very inexpensive, very easily accessible. But in reality, the patients taking your product would have failed on aspirin and other inexpensive treatment. Therefore, the most relevant comparator would likely be a more complex, more efficacious treatment that also comes with a price tag. So the health technology assessment agencies, the HTA agencies, do want to see the added clinical benefit versus that relevant comparator and the cost effectiveness versus that relevant comparator or comparators. And given that there is, in most cases, no head-to-head -head trials with that comparator, well, they had limited evidence to evaluate this. This is where the need for this new technology comes from. In terms of the indirect treatment comparison, well, to explain it briefly, um, for example, your product, which will be product A, had a trial against placebo, product B. But really, product C is deemed the relevant comparator. Well, if your product C has a trial against placebo also, one can use the relative efficacy to placebo to link A and C together. Now, to give this into a numerical example, Let's say that your product is 40% better than placebo. The comparator is actually only 20% better than placebo. Then one would expect your product to be 20% better than the comparator C. So what does this new technology provide, the indirect treatment comparison? Well, it's a relatively reliable measure of efficacy between the comparators. So it's giving you an indication of better outcomes. And by outcomes, I mean it could be efficacy, it could be tolerability, but it can only be one outcome being assessed at a time. It can also, when used to evaluate multiple treatments, give you the ranking of the most efficacious to the least. However, the reason why I say it's a relatively reliable measure is because those are provided regardless of patient differences. So using the relative efficacy measures, it maintains randomization. And on top of that, you are only using randomized controlled trials to limit bias, so no observational studies. However, there's limited statistics to inform on how similar or heterogeneous the patient population is and is between the studies. So you don't really know whether you're comparing apples to apples or apples to oranges. And there is no statistics to let you know how much percentage of heterogeneity there is between the two. So that's one thing to really keep in mind with this because the analysis can be performed either way. However, it is only appropriate when you are comparing apples to apples. Another thing to mention is that, yes, it might be a very similar patient population in reality and practice, but that also has to be reflected in the studies. So the patient population has to be comparable between the studies you are using to perform this analysis. How is the methodology received by the HCA agencies? 
Well, they feel they are no longer limited to making recommendations in the dark when they have no head-to-head -head comparative efficacy, and that is very understandable. In uh, Canada, the ACA agency of the Canadian Agency for Drugs and Technologies in Health, CADIS, has actually a, used a proactive approach and initiated the ITCs on established markets which are called the therapeutic reviews. However, some reviews were not able to separate treatments based on the efficacy. So once considered equivalent, a cost comparison outlined the most cost-saving products. And this uh, might have been picked up by manufacturers as a great publicity, especially coming from an objective third-party uh, agency. But it is not to be confused for the most cost-saving product to the most cost-effective product, because cost-effectiveness entails a clinical benefit. So of course, the products highlighted benefited from the review. However, those that were not, well, the manufacturers might have felt this as being unfair. Also, the ACA agencies are not asking for these ITCs to be included in reimbursement requests when it is applicable. And this is very understandable, as I mentioned earlier. Your new technology is usually compared with the same gold standard as its relevant comparators. Therefore, it's very easy to perform a simple indirect treatment comparison using the two treatments anchored on one common comparator. And this is what I will be showing you in the second portion of this webinar.